Chavez Juarez, in its old districts and its new neighborhoods, in the winds of the frontier, in the witty volubility of its people, in its daily grind, in its Rio Bravo, in its bridges, in its industry, here is Juarez. Here, a great number of stories interact, all crowded in this beautiful chaos of everyday life, but intermingling with a cast of characters that repeat incessantly without knowing if they're protagonists or characters of many stories developing at once. Juarez is the largest border city in Mexico, and it carries the name of Benito Juarez because Juarez was shelter to him and the country's presidency. And thanks to his action, it was possible to recover the Republic. Juarez hides in its corners the small towns lost in the great maps that only appear miraculously because it has in its streets characters and accents that come from every corner of the country, that generate in its cuisine smells that send us back to forgotten places, hidden places, but that today have their home and place in this city, Ciudad Juarez. Here is the provincial country love that in the same way is present in its neighborhoods, in reunions with friends and family, as it is in the varieties of restaurants, cafes, hotels, and stores. Here is Juarez, with a little bit of everything, but overall full of noble people, humble and brave, generous, hardworking and visionary. In other words, so full of life. Not everyone has the privilege of living in a border city. It's not a coincidence that year after year, thousands pass through Juarez, finding this enchanting mix that complements our city's many days of sun and its people. Juarez is here, in its industrial fields, where Juarez's hands produce medical equipment, auto supplies, phones, and an endless amount of products and goods that reach every corner of the planet. And that thanks to the hands, ideas, and designs of Juarez's, Life is made easier today for millions of people around the world. Here is Juarez. In its universities, schools, and colleges that year after year cultivate and graduate professional scientists, researchers, and entrepreneurs that use their unique bicultural border ingredient to contribute a fresh and distinct vision wherever they are. Here is Juarez. In its history, where the gentleness inherited from its first inhabitants blends itself with the vision of enterprising friars and the adventurous Spanish blood of the conquistadors. Here is Juarez. It was here where the Mexican Revolution is finalized, where the Toma de Ciudad Juarez takes place and the signing of the treaties that forced President Porfirio Diaz to resign. It was here where Francisco Madero made his triumphant entry and it was the Aduana building where he established his headquarters. Witness to many wars and battles still today, here is Juarez, invincible, heroic, stunning. The only city that has received lands from the United States without the need for a war, here is Juarez. At times, hidden in its modernist and progressive architecture, Juarez, in its intense commercial corridors, in its frolicking racket, with something special for everyone. Here is Juarez, where no one is worth less than anyone, where the talent of artists, athletes, boxers, singers, composers, and more build their lives and choose their fate. That bastion of pride for the important actors of this eternal play that is coming and going on the streets, the bridges, and the avenues of Juarez. They are the true heroes of this story. They are made of tradition, bravery, truth, love, and solidarity. The essence of Ciudad Juarez is present in the pride of its people. The Juarenses, the ones from here, the ones with conviction. Juarez is the people that build it every day. Juarez is its families who look at the future with hope. Juarez moves like the sands of its desert, and like it, Juarez has a burning heart that makes it dynamic, thriving, entrepreneurial, and distinguished. It transforms and recreates itself every day as it has for so many years with the desires and hard work of its inhabitants. The best cities to live in, the most beautiful cities, are those that shine with their own light thanks to its people. Here are the Warrenses. Here 
y es Ciudad Juárez. Two years ago, Mexican President Felipe Calderón launched a major offensive against drug traffickers. The campaign, which is now partially funded by the U.S., has sparked an all-out war. Drug cartels are fighting the army, police, and one another in order to control lucrative smuggling routes into the United States. But for many Mexicans, the war has meant something else a complete breakdown of law and order, and a spike in violence. Last year, there were more than 6,000 bodies buried in Mexico, and this year, the rate is increasing. The effects of the drug war on America's border go beyond the number of dead. Whole sections of the city are being terrorized by the violence. Residents are fleeing, and those remaining are asking why. Everyone in Ciudad Juarez knows what it means when the twin white vans pull up in a neighborhood. Another dead body has been found. Here, two bodies were found on the sidewalk, shot to death, as they almost always are. Yvette del Carmenanos lives a block away and heard the shots. In February, there were more than 220 murders here, the most of any city in Mexico, and the rate is rising. They're almost all drug-related. But Gustavo Ruiz's days have almost all been intense, at least during the last year. Gustavo is part body collector, part crime scene investigator. He is part of the team that does a basic forensic investigation of the scene and then loads the bodies into the familiar white vans. The evidence is then processed here, everything from shell casings and fingerprints to murder weapons. The modern facility is straight out of the TV show, CSI. The irony is that despite all the effort, the perpetrators of the violence, the war in drug cartels, are hardly ever brought to justice. That is not our job, so the frustration is, 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 is there, but it's not uh, a lot because we are solving the question that investigator wants to know. So that's their job. A corrupt court system means that only a tiny number of these cases are ever brought to court. So the boxes of evidence pile up. We are uh, uh, having a plan to uh, restructure and give us more room to, to put all the boxes. But there's little time here to talk about the new facilities. Yeah. Laboratorios, personal. Twenty-two is the code for a dead body. So before he can finish processing the evidence from the earlier double murder, Gustavo has to hit the road. Ultimamente, para qué el rumbo? Han salido casi, han salido montones, han salido montones, bastantes como unos quince en este mes ahí. This murder happened within a mile of the U.S. border, along a key smuggling route. The driver of the car somehow survived the attack and was taken away by ambulance. But after only 15 minutes of investigation, the local police take off. There has been yet another shooting. Más adelante, ahí los balasear, a la ambulancia. Están heridos ahorita. This body is the driver who initially survived the earlier shooting. The perpetrator stopped the ambulance and finished him off, 
For three full hours, he lay dead on this major thoroughfare because there was yet another murder that Gustavo had to investigate. In this case, the man was killed by a machine gun, and from the crime scene, Gustavo detects something suspicious. Sabemos que hay sangre y hay proyecciones de sangre donde nos dice que posiblemente hubo otra persona, pero no lo tenemos en físico, no sabemos dónde está. They would later find out that the other victim was not a he, but a she, an innocent nine-year-old girl who got caught up in the crossfire and was killed. Back at his office, Gustavo's shift is over, but he still has to do paperwork and check the corpses for gunpowder residue. Serían tres, cuatro, como siete, llamamos ocho, más o menos, en el día, ocho. Es un día con trabajo, con bastante trabajo, pero todavía ha habido con más trabajo, el doble de trabajo todavía. He doesn't know it yet, but the next day's total will top more than 20 bodies. A usted la veo afectada. Imagínese a mí que lo hago todo el año. Sylvia Ruiz Lopez prefers to sit behind her locked front gate. She used to venture outside, taking strolls through the neighborhood, visiting family and friends, but no more, not since last summer when her son Alejandro was killed. In vez yo me siento que Oh, no, en vez de yo le digo a mis hijas, yo ya quiero irme también, le digo, porque yo siempre me ha sido muy duro esto. Lopez's daughters live nearby and comfort their mother, but they always sit inside. Soñé que yo iba, quién sabe cómo iba yo así en una calle. Y cuando yo volví y que me dijo el mamá, tengo mucho frío, me dice. Pero yo no miraba su cara muy bonita con esa blanca, blanca se la miraba ahí. But what haunts Lopez are not the reoccurring dreams of her son, pictured here on the left, or the fears that she has for the two children he left behind. It's the fact that she'll probably never find out what happened to her son. Acta de función dice que murió por estrangulamiento. O sea que no murió todavía con las heridas, las 10 cuchilladas que le en el estómago. Y luego le metieron un calcetín en la boca de su mismo calcetín. The family says that Alejandro was last seen in police custody. Honest or corrupt police, they can't say for sure. But they insist he was not involved in drug trafficking, although he did have some problems with a neighborhood gang. Did the police kill him? Did they turn him over to the gang? Is the information about the cops even true? In most places, his murder would be investigated and maybe solved. Lopez says that there has been no investigation, and in Ciudad Juarez, that's not unusual. Que no se resuelve nada, tanta y pensar a diario yo veo las noticias y pensar que a diario pasa uno la gente pasa otras gentes lo que uno pasó, porque es muy feo. Like many others here, she blames President Felipe Calderón for starting a war with the drug traffickers. Violence and trafficking has always existed in Juarez for decades. But only in the last year has the lawlessness totally spun out of control. Resulta que ahora hasta gente que no ande en eso matan. Ya ya cualquiera ya ya trae pistola, ya cualquiera ya agarra uno y ya lo mata. No necesita que ande en drogas, o sea, que están yo digo aprovechando la ocasión. This was the second threat Jorge Luis received. It was last November, and another journalist had just been killed. So he wasn't going to take any chances. Like many other Mexicans with enough money, he and his family fled Ciudad Juarez, crossed the Rio Grande River, and settled in El Paso, Texas. Now he runs the most popular news blog in Juarez, from this room in El Paso. He's close enough to the border to communicate with undercover reporters on the other side. Okay, pues ahí estamos pendientes de todo lo que, lo que suceda, ¿no? His site is called La Polaca, which is a derogatory slang word for a politician. The blog is humorous and reads like a tabloid, but he says the things that everyone in Juarez is thinking, but are too afraid to say. Una vela en el entierro 
en un, en un funeral se utilizan velas. Pero en el lenguaje coloquial quiere decir que si tú tienes vela en el entierro, tienes culpa de algo. ¿Sí? Entonces estoy diciendo que el, que el gobierno tiene una vela en el entierro por la delincuencia y el crimen organizado. Porque no se puede entender un crimen organizado sin la bendición del gobierno. His essays are particularly harsh on local politicians and prosecutors, many of whom, he says, are corrupt. But he also got in trouble with the warring drug cartels when one side posted comments on the blog. Si tú publicabas una, un cartel de determinado asesinato contra una mafia, se enojaba la mafia que contraria si tú lo publicabas, y entonces ahí vinieron las amenazas. He turned off comments completely, but the threat still came. So after a well-respected journalist known as El Choco was assassinated, Luis moved his whole family here to this nondescript American tract house. I feel safe here. Even, even if something happened to me in, here in El Paso, I know somehow it will be investigated. Everywhere the Garcia family goes, they go together, often hand in hand. It's gotten too dangerous in Riviera del Bravo for anyone to be alone. This family has stayed in one of the most dangerous areas of Juarez. Most of their neighbors have already fled. They've kept up their daily routine, like sending dad off to work, but in a rapidly deteriorating environment. Es que ahorita la juventud, los muchachos jóvenes de 16, 17, 18 años, están muy, pero andan, pero bien destrampados, como dicen a, allá para México. Aquí, aquí nomás en esta etapa, viera cómo, cómo se pone en la noche. Irma Lucia Campechano says that since the drug war heated up, the police have largely abandoned this area, as they have in other parts of Juarez. They're no match for the power of the war in drug cartels. They show up only when there's a murder, otherwise. Todo está, ni siquiera, ya somos una patrulla. So they make do. Six-year-old Guadalupe isn't allowed outside their high walls alone. And they hope their baby pit bull will soon add another layer of protection. Siento in the past, the drug cartels would have left a poor family like the Garcias alone, but now lawlessness is on the rise, and kidnapping and extortion of even poor Mexicans is growing. Siento Yo huele mi corazón así, está así, siento así, así de miedo, así miedo. De pelota. Guadalupe has been exposed to violence in ways that are hard to imagine for a six-year-old. In the previous week, there was a murder out in front of her school, where this memorial stands. And even inside school, there's little safety for these first graders. The schools are even targets of extortion. Incluso cuando llegabas a escuelas, veías un cartelón amenazando donde donde se iban a secuestrar niños si no se pagaba una cierta cuota o si los maestros no daban el aguinaldo. Joaquín Ramirez says he was not one of those extorted, and all the children here remained safe. But that's not the only challenge. Growing up in a culture of drug trafficking and the violence that goes along with it would likely affect these children. Muchos de los papás de los niños pues, son, son puchadores o venden droga o, o son cholos. Este, entonces los mismos niños van creciendo con esa imagen. De cierta manera ellos piensan que es normal. So Joaquín is doing what little he can to change things. Each morning he keeps the children spellbound with a story. Today he's using Arabian Nights to teach the children to resist the temptation of easy money, a lesson against the lure of drug dealing. Te va a estar preguntando cosas sobre ti y te va a estar obsequiando cosas a fin de que les des el, lo más precioso que ellos quieren, los peces de colores. He hopes the stories are getting through. He says that since the violence has increased, there have been more discipline problems. Lo que notamos nosotros como maestros aquí que los niños como que están notando cierto estrés. Ciertos tres días se están reflejando ciertas conductas que antes no tenían más más agresividad. 
It's the end of the school day, and Guadalupe does not leave the classroom until her father comes to pick her up. Arm in arm, they walk home, unsure of what the next day will bring.